Good evening. Uh, welcome to the talk back for Generation Lockdown. I'm Dennis Hirschfelder from the Brady Campaign, Bergen County, and I will be moderating the discussion this evening. Uh, first, let me thank the sponsors of Generation Lockdown, uh, Senator Loretta Weinberg, whom I will formally introduce in a moment, and the Brady Campaign. Uh, before I introduce the panelists, let me remind viewers out there that this talkback is in real time and you can submit questions to them via the chat button. Uh, the panelists for this evening, we have a terrific panel. Um, includes Senator Loretta Weinberg, who is the majority leader of the New Jersey Senate, a longtime Teaneck resident. And for the past 30 years, one of the nation's most important state level leaders of gun violence prevention legislation, uh, responsible more than anyone else for New Jersey being one of the top two or three states in this nation in terms of gun violence prevention legislation and programming. Uh, Sarad Balducci, the director and screenwriter. Flo Mitchell Brown, executive producer. Lawrence Fine, Students Demand Action, Bergen County, and Caleb Brown, a student uh, at uh, TJ Middle School, Thomas Jefferson Middle School here in Teaneck. And I think it's fair to say without Caleb, we wouldn't be here this evening. And Caleb, uh, I'd like you to share with us your story. Uh, how did the story come to be that you wrote that served as a basis for Generation Lockdown? Well, I'm going to be honest, I never thought that we were ever going to make this a movie. And this is so crazy to me, seeing this out. <laughs> but I I felt like this had to be told because this is serious. And this is, is school supposed to be a place where you're supposed to be safe. And you don't have to worry about somebody coming in to do harm. So I, I, I realized that. And I was like, you know what? I think I should write about this, because even if, and I and, and in my head, I was thinking, even if it doesn't get, if, even if my message doesn't get sent out, they, my people in my classmates, my my class and my classmates can hear hear my story, and yeah. So was this an assignment, or did you just do this on your own? Oh, this was an assignment back in sixth grade. Uh huh. Sixth grade, wow. And uh, what did the teacher have to say when he or she got the paper? I guess it's not paper anymore. Well, I'll, I'll, I'll chime in here because uh, her and, and his assistant teacher read it and they called me immediately. Um, and they basically, first they said, he's not in trouble. <laughs> <laughs> he was going to be in a little bit of trouble, but he got into some good trouble. And all she said is, I'm putting it in his bag and he has to bag. because they could not believe that an 11 year old wrote this story because it was so compelling and it, it, it literally brought her to tears. And that's Mrs. Miranda, who was his sixth grade teacher at Thomas Jefferson Middle School. Well, wow. uh, Flo, could you continue the, the, the conversation in a sense? Tell us, how did his story, how did Caleb's story get to be a movie called Generation Lockdown or serve as the basis for the film? Well, what happened is after I read it, I was in tears by the time I read the essay. And um, I, I've had, this has been a, a matter that has been very strong in, in my heart ever since what happened in um, Sandy Hook because at that time, Caleb was in second grade. And I remember when I dropped him off at school after that shooting, we, he used to, we used to have this routine where he kissed me all over my face. I used to say, cover my face with kisses, so I have them all day. And he did that that day, but then for some reason, when he ran to go into school, he stopped halfway and he waved to me. And I cried all the way to work thinking about all those parents that are never going to have that moment again, you know? So when I read this, it brought back all those emotions. And then I said, you know what? I was with my brother and I said, we have to tell this story. People need to know that this is what's going on. And, and it was a real aha moment for me because I had no idea 
how scared Caleb was because what that story spoke to me was all his fears. And then I thought about all these other children throughout the world who are probably deathly afraid now because of these instances that keep happening. <laughs> That's mm -hmm. You know, how it all came to be. And then I reached out to my partner in crime here, Sarad, and we had been talking about producing this type of content. And, you know, she said, yes. You know, she said, and she did a brilliant job writing the screenplay. And we did inject one little piece in the screenplay that of an event that happened to my middle son at when he was at Hawthorne, the, the bathroom scene we added because that was based on a true incident that actually happened at the Hawthorne Elementary School in Teaneck. But it wasn't a shooter, but it was a domestic violence situation where someone got into the school and they locked the school down. Wow. And that first lockdowns um, that was real. And, and uh, he did stand up on the toilet and he did wet himself. It was a, it was a very traumatic experience for him. So that's why, you know, we decided to add that part of it to the story, but the rest of the story was pretty much true to what Caleb wrote. Well, thanks Flo. Surat, um, share with us, what, what were some of the challenges that you had in shooting this film and making this film? The, um, what, what, you know, you're an experienced filmmaker, but what really did you have to think about in putting it together? I mean, you know, it, you know, I've been on a, a million movie sets and I'm very familiar with my way around, you know, coming from a film background, but, you know, going into this, you know, my, probably my biggest fear and challenge was, you know, how am I gonna, am I gonna traumatize these children actors? And how are they going to, how am I gonna coach them through this? And, um, but what was really surprising to me is that I was taught by these children, um, you know, they, they know how to do this because they do it all the time. And they know more about lockdowns and procedure and where, where to hide. And it's, it's heartbreaking, um, but it was, a real, it, was a, it was really, really moving. And what was really moving about it also was how passionate these kids and their families were about making this film. Um, everyone involved um, all throughout, throughout every single um, actor, every single person who came to do background and you know showed up on that day, all understood what we were doing it for. So they were, you know, um, they were little activists in their own right, and it was really inspiring. And you know. Um, you know, and it was very intense. Um, so that was that was what I thought was going to be a challenge going into it. And I was um, educated by them. Um, mm -hmm. I'm really moved. We were all really moved. It was a, it was a really incredible experience um, to go through. How many uh, were the students, mostly students from BF, or were they actors, actresses? It was a mixture. I mean, we had uh, many, many um, children and families from the community and from Teaneck, which was great, um, you know, and um, a few actors from the city, but mostly, no, mostly it was the Teaneck community and family. So it was, so this tonight was really wonderful to be able to finally share it with everyone um, mm -hmm. in this way, because we've been really, really, uh, we really wanted to share it with these families who were so generous and so incredible to come, well. come together. Thank you. Uh, Lawrence, um, I've, I've known you since you've been a freshman and now you're a senior. And uh, I must commend you on the wonderful leadership that you're providing both at the, uh, in, from in Ridgewood, in Bergen County, the state level, and most importantly at the national level. Uh, you really are a wonderful role model in the gun violence prevention movement. But uh, what, are your, what are your experiences with um, active shooter drills? Uh, do you relate to the what was shown in the film? Yeah, um, thank you so much, Dennis. And it's just so scary every time I watched that film. I remember um, I was in fifth grade during a lockdown drill and I, I knew it was a drill, but I was in the bathroom and I had to follow the protocol <laughs> in the film. They talked about following the protocol. Um, and it's something that we just have to become accustomed to. Um, and over time, what I've seen, 
I remember the first lockdown drill after the Parkland shooting was made a lot of people, including myself, feel uneasy. But um, to, to the question of whether people take it seriously, whether people are more anxious, um, it's a bit of both. Um, some people just become so numb to it because it becomes so normalized, which is something necessary that students who go to schools in America have to become totally 100% comfortable and used to these type of things happening on a regular basis. And it's something that, you know, whenever we have a lockdown in school, everyone is just like robotically automatically knows what to do. They go to the corner of the classroom, the teacher pulls down the windows. It just becomes part of a routine. And for me, it's also a reminder of like why we have this. And it's also, it creates a lot of anxiety for a lot of people as well. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Um, the questions are coming in. It's wonderful. But before we get to them, I want to ask Senator Weinberg. Um, what, from a public policy perspective, uh, the whole, what can and should be done to better address the issue of gun violence in schools and to prepare schools uh, for dealing with such a situation? Uh, and, and Dennis, just before I answer I, I, that particular question, uh, the story that Flo told of taking Caleb to school, I went through a, a practically a, a replica of that experience. Not too long after Sandy Hook, I drove my two grandchildren who were in elementary school mm -hmm. at the time to school and I watched them run through the playground entrance with the little backpacks. And it suddenly, I, I saw the parents who had done that with this group of students. And I sat in my car and cried. So mm. what Flo just spoke about was actually the same experience that I had. Mm -hmm. um, in, in terms of legislation, we, uh, as you said, we've done a tremendous amount here in New Jersey and probably have among the strongest gun violence prevention laws in the nation. But there is one big issue that I'm hoping a new administration in Washington will devote some resources and spotlight to, and that is the development of a handgun that can only be used by the authorized user. There is no reason that this uh, uh, technology is not on the brink. And what, what's happened in the past is that it was difficult for research uh, groups to get a gun manufacturer to make a prototype because they were afraid of the NRA and they were afraid of the pushback. So I think we need a nationwide push because mm -hmm. that will not only help hold down a young person getting somebody else's gun, it will help in terms of suicide prevention, mm -hmm. domestic violence, all of the other things we see in homes that have firearms. Mm -hmm. So that to me is one of the big undone issues uh, in terms of our state laws anyway. Mm -hmm. uh, thank you. Uh, we have two qu couple questions for you, Caleb. Um, the first is, are you still writing? And secondly, um, Caleb, what is the message that you want people to take away from this film? So are you still writing? Um, no, I'm not still writing. And the message, it, it, it's not it's not just for kids it's more to the also to the parents that this can happen any day and you got to cherish and love one another because you never know when this can happen and always be safe mm -hmm. okay good um here's a comment from thank you very much caleb um Here's a comment from someone. I remember hiding under a desk in elementary school in the 50s in the hope of saving ourselves from an atomic bomb. I don't think it was as real and frightening as these, as these drills are today. Is there any way to make these drills less traumatic? 
And I toss that out to all of you who come at this from a different different perspectives. How do you make this less traumatic? And I know that this has been an issue uh, that others have raised too about active shooter lockdown drills. Well, I think that, that one of the things that I would say as a parent and, and part of the rationale also for making the film is I think the key is that we have to make the children feel safe. And even myself growing up, when we had our, our drills, they weren't for this purpose. It was just the whole notion of feeling safe. And that was the thing, that was what um, many children have communicated with me. And the whole idea, and I don't, I don't know how many, I found out, I was astounded how many parents didn't realize the protocol is that if you're in the bathroom, that's it, you're locked out. They lock those doors and the students know this. So can you imagine how scary it is for a child to know that he's locked out if he goes to the bathroom and there's a, there's a drill, there's one of these lockdowns, like a real live you know, lockdown situation, they have nowhere to go. So one of the things that I have thought about as a parent, because I have this awareness around it, is coming up with different ways that we can, we can make the children feel safe. I was saying, you know, we spend all this money. I, I, I lived through 9-11 and I've seen the level of security that has been put into these office buildings in the city. You know, why do we not have safe rooms for our kids? So if you are locked out, you have somewhere, they, they have designated like, bulletproof safe rooms they could go and they could just be there and and just shelter in place so they're not alone because that was that moment that that we displayed in the film you know that the character josh he was all by himself Jaden was alone and they know it so i feel as like caleb said you know we're speaking to adults here you know we're the ones that are making these decisions why are we not figuring out how to make them feel safe and, and we're making them not feel safe because they know they can go to the bathroom and one of these incidents can occur. Yeah. And that's the protocol. Uh, Lawrence and I, Caleb too, uh, are your fellow students as traumatized as the students and teacher were in the film, uh, appeared in the film? Do you, do you, do you feel that your, 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 your fellow students share your, your, your concern and uh, reaction to uh, active shooter drills? Basically, you do not feel safe if you were locked out. Does oh. it make you feel not safe? In a situation like that, yes. Lawrence? Yes. So, um, to guess, uh, I guess to add on to what I was talking about earlier, um, it's really a mix of both. Um, a lot of students feel unsafe, um, but there's only so much trauma that can normalize a situation which is also something that's so serious as well the fact that it just becomes second nature oh let's sit down in the corner and make sure that no one in the windows can see us um and i feel like sometimes we kind of forget of like this is why we need to do this but mm -hmm. at the same time um you know others and you know, everyone kind of reacts to the situation differently and it's there's so much anxiety and it's, it's really, it's scary. It's so scary. And a lot of times we know it's a drill a lot of times. Um, and it's, it, it's a lot. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> here's a comment from uh, uh, a, a viewer. I spoke with a teacher, not Teaneck, who felt that teachers should be trained over the summer and should carry guns. My husband was a soldier and then police officer and no summer training could give even a bit of that training and reflex. So I think it would be much more dangerous. What is the panel's opinion on, uh, on arming um, uh, people in schools, be they teachers or, or resource officers? Any, from anyone's perspective. I feel that um, in a lot of ways, it's a distraction um, from the real issue. Um, if the teacher had a gun, what would she have done? Would she just go into the hallway, try to find the shooter and hope that she, she can shoot the shooter before the shooter shoots her? Um, or as, um, as 
he's opening the door um, to try to shoot the shooter before he shoots anyone else. It's instead of trying to focus on how do we react to violence, we should need, we need to focus on how we can prevent uh, prevent violence. And the whole idea of arming teachers, a lot of ways, it's just a distraction from the real issue, is, which is how do we get guns away from people who want to shoot up schools and how we can end the division in our society that is leading people to these to these dark places that cause them to do this and to make sure that those type of people don't have access to guns. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, Senator Weinberg, this is for you. Would the state consider getting involved in gun buybacks? We do. Yeah. Uh, municipalities and the state do gun buybacks mm -hmm. now. Right. Uh, so it, it, we do have laws. And uh, they're usually shown in the news media afterwards. And it's amazing to me when I look at a huge table full of these uh, firearms that actually get turned back into law enforcement. And just one other thing, I would be wholeheartedly against having more guns in the school and arming teachers. I don't believe the teachers generally want to be armed and want to be trained, uh, even if they could be. And all it does is bring more pro proliferation of firearms into the school building. Right. A uh, question for you, Sarad, and also Flo. Can you explain the meaning we should take away from the swimming pool scene with Kayla? Well, um, so the symbolism of that is, um, you know, I just, I, I just wanted it to go further emotionally. All I had on my mind were all the children that have died before and how they are looking down at us and crying and looking down at the situation and Jaden is one that joins the rest of them. And that's why we um, were, were uh, that's why we featured, you know, all of many, many victims from Parkland. We worked with Stand With Parkland, the organization um, who um, are parents and family members of those who have passed. And they sent us the, the photos of their loved ones. Um, so it was very important to me to include them because this film was also, for me, also honoring them um, and everyone who's affected by it in every way. So the, the, the tears became just the pool of tears. That was how I, what I called it was that it's just this overwhelming flow of emotion and we're just, we're drowning in it. All of us are drowning in it. We drowned in it. Since Sandy Hook, we've drowned in it every single time there's another school shooting anywhere. It brings back all of those emotions for us. Um, and, you know, so it was just, I just wanted it to go as far as it could emotionally. And I felt, we all feel like we're drowning. Caleb felt like he was drowning. Like it just, just needed to go there. And, and, and you feel suffocated because you also feel helpless in this situation. We all feel helpless, you know? And after Sandy Hook, laws didn't change. And that's why we have to continue to put this message out there in, and, and move people so that they will get behind changing these laws once and for all. Uh, one other question for you, Sarat. How long did the film take to shoot? And uh, who edited it? Oh, yes. So it took, well, we, it was a six day shoot. Um, and yes, the, I want to definitely, absolutely. The, the DP is Lisa Rinsler, who was an amazing, amazing artist in her own right. Um, and Alexander Hammer was the editor. Um, his latest film is the Amy Schumer documentary on HBO. Mm -hmm. Um, but he's incredible. And I, and I, I, I begged for him to, to come on board and I knew that he would take the the fantasy sort of element of it and really bring that to life, which was very important to me. Because if we're gonna be in a dream, let's, let's be in a dream, you know? So the whole film is a dream, but in a way it's not a dream because it's the reality of what our children are going through. So um, we're never waking up from it, you know? 
that kind of thing. So I knew that he could he could take it home. But yes, Alexander Hammer, he's wonderful, and Lisa Rinsler, incredible artists. Thank you. Uh, we have a question about uh, from a teacher. How do I show this film in my classroom? And uh, let me just interject that they're elementary school students, they're middle school students, or high school students. So, Caleb, uh, do you have any thoughts if you if you're going to tell a teacher? how to, if you're gonna work with the teacher, how to show this film to his or her class. What would you say? Or Flo? Yeah, well, what we're doing right now is we're exploring opportunities to design some curriculum to um, work alongside the film and create edits of the film that are age appropriate because of course it's very graphic um, and it could be very traumatic for a child if you don't have the right tools to go alongside with it. So that, that's something that we're looking into and exploring right now. Um, and then Caleb, uh, when you were talking, Sarad, Caleb said that, that this was not definitely not a dream and that this is a reality that, that him and his peers are facing. Um, one other point I just wanted to make about the film um, while we were shooting it. The scene that we shot with Joshua when he came in to the room, um, that was a very powerful scene even for us as adults because it created a lot of trauma for Josh. And we had to actually stop, stop filming because he, he, got, he broke down, he cried, he was like inconsolable. We had to take time to like help him get back onto set and get that shot because he totally understood what was happening. You know, he was, he knew he was falling to his death. So I think it's important for people to understand that even when we did this film, it was, it was acting and make believe it still really, really resonated for these children. Um, and so in that scenario, you know, we couldn't even keep him emotionally safe. So just imagine children dealing with this in real life. I just wanted to add that. Uh, a question, I guess, for Flo uh, or, or Sarad. Well, Flo, why don't you take it? Um, where do we go from here with, the, where are you going to go with the film from here? Is it going to be shown on uh, Netflix? Uh, what are the plans for it? From, my, from their mouth to God's ears. <laughs> <laughs> So, so as I mentioned before, we're working on designing a curriculum. And the goal is that we want to make this curriculum agnostic so that Rod and myself and Peggy Connolly, um, who are my partners at Give Film, um, will continue to make these type of projects that stem from the voices of young people, stories that are written by um, young people because it's important that we raise their voices. They are our future. So the goal is that absolutely distribution is really the key is what we what we were what we're looking for and the opportunity to make more of these type of projects so that we can have them work along with curriculum so that educators and administrators and community based organizations that work with young people can show them and use them as a tool because our partner Peggy um, did a lot of research there was a lot of that went in behind the scenes to make sure that when we made this film, we intentionally, we went against protocol in many instances so that if a educator were to show this to a group of students, they can have questions afterwards and ask them, what did they do right? What did they do wrong? You know, and, and provoke conversation. How about that? Give them an opportunity, a safe place to speak about their emotions behind this because that's part of it too. Like whenever there's these shootings and, and, and these hor horrific instances that happen in schools, you always say, oh, they're bringing counselors in. Okay, so, okay, you bring counselors in and what? And then what? What are the action items? And what are the long-term action items of support that mm -hmm. we're giving them? So they can cross mm -hmm. Thank you. We want to continue doing this and we want to package this so that this film and other films that we make are, are able to get distributed throughout our world 
so that people mm -hmm. can use them in schools or community-based mm -hmm. organizations, or people can view them in home, at home and use the curriculum at home. So parents have conversations with their children. Thank you. Uh, Lawrence, this is uh, for you. Um, what can be done to make lockdown uh, student uh, active shooter drills less anxiety producing? What kind of, do you think more thought needs to go into the planning and execution of these drills to A, make them impactful, but B, to perhaps make them less of uh, anxiety producing among students? It's a very difficult question because how can we reduce the anxiety that is indu that is induced onto all of these kids in a drill for something that is just for something that induces so much anxiety like it, it's it's very hard to do and mostly like the easiest thing is like in most cases we know it's a drill so we don't have to have like, you know, we won't be as scared. And now we really just get to be familiar with the protocol of how, um, how things work. But in nature, it's going to induce anxiety because it's preparing for a deadly shooting. And what I feel like is the best thing to reduce the anxiety that is induced is create a world without school shootings, create a country without school shootings. We don't have to do this in other countries. They don't need to do this because it's not an issue in other countries. We had no school shootings in the spring only because schools were closed. And now that schools are open, it's never should be a concern for someone to go to school and then think about getting shot, to go to anywhere in public and think about getting shot. And it's scary. And I know earlier we were talking about Sandy Hook and that was so long ago, even the Parkland shooting, that which was two years ago. And there still has been no change at a national level in terms of gun policy, especially as times progress. Our background check system is dated in the 90s before um, the internet was as big as, as it is right now. And a lot of states, you can buy guns online without a background check. And even in New Jersey, where our gun laws are so strong, the majority of the guns used in crime in New Jersey come from other states. And that's because of the lax gun laws in other states, because and that's why it's a real national issue. And there needs to be action and ne that needs to take place. Well, okay, Senator Weinberg, this is uh, Lawrence's comment about out-of-state guns leads into a question we have for you. My understanding is that while New Jersey has strong gun control laws, neighboring states like Pennsylvania do not. And so there is a flow uh, into New Jersey of guns. How do we address this quote-unquote hole in our laws? Loretta, are you there? Okay. okay. Uh, that has to be done federally. And yes, we have been able to trace many of these guns. The gun alley comes through Indiana, Pennsylvania into New Jersey. And we're dealing with some issues legislatively of uh, uh, being able to trace them back to the, if, if in fact, the original seller came through a retail operation in one of those other states. So that is one issue we're working on. Uh, but something that both um, Lawrence and Caleb said, why can't we just encourage teachers or provide them with some outlines so that after there is a shooter drill, an active shooter drill, that they spend 10 or 15 minutes talking to students after that and letting students maybe vent a little bit about their feelings. Mm -hmm. I think that would be worthwhile and wouldn't detract from, the, from an overall curriculum. So that if that was kind of built into this active shooter idea, and again, what I don't learn from young people like Lawrence and like Caleb, I learned from my own grandchildren. And I know how uh, traumatized 
they have been from the active shooter drills. Caleb, we have a question for you. Uh, what was the most challenging part of this film for you? Um, definitely the pool scene. That was probably the most challenging one. And it was such a great shot because they had to get the camera on, they had to climb the ladder and then shoot it from over. Now, and it was very difficult. We had to do that like five times and we had to change the clothes. So yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. Where was the shot, Caleb? Um, this was shot at my aunt's pool uh -huh. in North Hale, in New Jersey. Uh-huh, okay. Um, thank you. We have a question. Um, I guess, Sarad, maybe you can answer it. Has the Board of Ed, has the Teaneck Board of Ed seen the film? Flo, you say yes. So. Um, That's a better question for Flo. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So Flo, you, you say yes. They, the Board of Ed, the whole Board of Ed saw it? Yes, the, the whole um, Board of Ed and um, Dr. Irving, um, even Linda Kerwin in, in his office, the principal at Thomas Jefferson um, at the time, Angela Davis, they were all very supportive and um, they have all seen the film. Yes, they even are, had the website. Board of are Ed. there plans in the, in the works because uh, one of TNEC's own uh, story gave rise to the film are there any plans to show it, uh, let's say to the high school, all high school, like we did last year? Yes, well, I, um, I've been speaking with Adrian Williams over at um, Teaneck High School in the Board of Ed. And um, we have been definitely in discussion about bringing this film. And I have another film that I had worked on with my older son on suicide and bullying. So we're trying to figure out a way to create a series and bring these different films in um, so that you know, we can tie in that these are students from Teaneck who went through the school system, but also they're all this subject matter that, that is relevant to, to young people. So yes, the answer is yes. Okay, uh, question I'm gonna ask for first uh, Lawrence and then Caleb, how often do active shooter lockdown drills occur? Lawrence? Hi, um, they usually occur um, it's hard to say. I don't think they've happened since schools reopened um, in Ridgewood. I know, I'm not so sure how that would work with um, social distancing in school, um, which is another um, another factor that um, makes me anxious of what happens um, with the lockdown during COVID. But um, you would occur around a month or once every two months. Okay. Caleb, how often were there uh, lockdown drills in, uh, at TJ? Um, these happen about once a month. Uh huh. Yeah, once a month, definitely. Okay. Thank you. Um, we, we have uh, several questions. Um, related to what can we do to help? And uh, I think, um, let me just weigh in on this one. I think it's very important for anyone who wants to help to get in touch with the Brady campaign. Uh, students can get in touch with Students Demand Action. Um, uh, the, they're very robust websites. will get you to the organization and then get you connected with local people. So get involved, number one, and number two, get on, uh, sign on with organizations so you get information uh, on a regular basis. There's an incredible newsletter, daily newsletter, if you will, called The Trace, has great information. Um, every town and Moms Demand Action and uh, Students Demand Action, all part of really one big organization, has excellent information that comes out regularly. So the most important thing you can do is A, get informed and B, get involved. There's a lot of work to be done and I think you all know that uh, from over the past, uh, what, six, seven years since, since, uh, since Sandy Hook, uh, the, the gun violence prevention movement has grown uh, dramatically and there's still one heck of a lot of work to do. Um, what, what do, let me direct this one to, um, uh, to Sarat. Um, 
if you were shooting the film again, as you look at it, look at it, look at it, is there anything you would do differently? Hmm. Um, there were some things that we wanted to do that we couldn't do. Um, we wanted to have um, some moments of the school completely quiet where it was just shots of the school in, in quiet lockdown where everything is happening behind, you know, behind the doors, but the school's kind of, you know, wind and vibration and things were happening. We also wanted to do a drone, a drone shot of all of the children um, entering the school because I wanted to show that it's an impossible image. You know, all of these children, hundreds of children are, are going into a school in which is in, in a way a trap. You know, in my mind it was a trap. And that was sort of the symbolism of the last shot, which was to create so many kids are coming in and Caleb is just saying, stop, don't come in, you know, don't come in. It, 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 and so for me, I would have loved to have had more of that, that kind of symbolism in it. But I think honestly, we got everything that we really wanted mm -hmm. and uh, brilliantly, you know, um, edited together in, you know, in a very, you know, very, you know, I mean, it was a, it's a little movie. It, we, we got everything in there that we could. So I couldn't be happier mm -hmm. um, with that, but right. yeah. Okay, but is it fair to say, Sarad, and uh, that the film shouldn't stand alone, or should, or should? When I say stand, not stand alone, uh, having um, whether you have uh, counselors on hand or you have uh, others who can be there as resource people to address issues or concerns that students would have after seeing the film, or just in the context of uh, active shooter drills. How do you? How do you? Uh, make it more understandable for students after seeing a film like this? I mean, I, I'm not sure. I mean, you know, for me, you know, I, I, think it's, I think we're all very sensitive, you know, and we're very, we're very, very sensitive about who sees this film and what age you are to see it. Um, you know, certainly I haven't even shown it to my 10 year old daughter and, and won't for a long time. Really? Um, yeah, <laughs> no, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm very, very, you know, I mean, people do ask that question. I think that it really takes like understanding the big picture of what, what it is before, you know, you can show it to a young person. Um, you know, they have to have know, know what's going on. Um, so in terms of like, you know, something that goes along with the film, I mean, I, you know, going back to like what we'd like to do with the film, I mean, I would love for it to have like a national tour, for example, where we, put together other, you know, um, pieces with it and, it and it goes to your local movie theater and you have a talk back with your local, you know, school and, um, you know, uh, you know, leaders in that community um, and, and those kinds of things where we could put together sort of this, the, the, an event, you know, um, that could go around so that we could continue to have this conversation and continue to put this message out there because we shouldn't stop until we have the laws to protect our children, you know, that put, put, put protections in place for our children so we can all feel good and our children can feel safe. And safety is the number one. So if, you know, we need to be able to work, cre the creatives need to be able to work with the advocates and the activists and um, help them and, and let us help you, you know? That's what this film is for. This film is to get people to stand up and 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 to take action so mm -hmm. if we can continue to to do that message all over the country that would be the the, the mission of the film mm -hmm. and you know that would be that would be the success of this film okay uh caleb we have two questions for you and this may end up uh uh ending our our wonderful talk back number one when you wrote the story was it a dream did you write it as a dream and number two what career are you interested in pursuing um, so for the first question, you, no, I, I did not, I didn't have that dream. Uh -huh. I, I, I kind of just was writing a story and I kind of wanted to make it scary, but realistic at the same time. Uh -huh. And the second question, I'm pursuing basketball. And uh -huh. I, and, so. Well, 
Well, first, congratulations to you. You did a, 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 an incredible job and uh, really. Um, so uh, I want to thank you all very, very much for a wonderful talk back. And I want to thank the, uh, the audience out there, the virtual audience, for the wonderful questions. I hope you've uh, been informed and enlightened, all of you, by what you saw on the screen and what you heard follow, uh, following up. This uh, uh, gun violence is a major public health problem in this country, a real serious problem. And uh, there, uh, there's a lot of work being done by activists uh, like Lawrence and his, he's got thousands and thousands of peers around the country working in schools, high schools uh, and other schools, colleges as well. And so there's a lot to do. found them the the evening thought provoking and good night thank you <laughs> it was great thank you so much everyone thank you it was really wonderful <laughs>